Welcome to this lecture about privacy notice interfaces. This lecture is going to meet one of our learning objectives for this week, which is to understand current best practices in privacy communication. I should also mention, though, it ties directly into the fourth course objective, which is to identify design improvements for security and privacy interfaces. Internet privacy issues arise from how sites or apps use data. Users give up their personal data to get something from the sites or apps, so such as their accounts. We get our names, usernames, and passwords in return. We might also get purchases, so we'll give up addresses and credit card numbers. We might get directions, nearby information through our location, and there's lots of other examples. Sites or apps collect and record this data via tracking cookies, traffic logs, other data structures or methods such as beacons or fingerprinting. And then also mobile apps and Internet of Things devices have expanded the amount and types of data that are collected and available for inference purposes. The predominant design pattern for how sites and apps collect this data and get our consent is called notice and choice. And this brings me to the Federal Trade Commission version of what's called the Fair Information Practice Principles, or the FIPS. So one principle is notice or awareness. Companies should notify consumers about the personal data that is being collected about them. Then choice or consent. Consumers need options to control how data is used. There are other principles though. One is access or participation. Consumers need the ability to view and verify the accuracy of the data that is being collected about them. Integrity or security, companies should ensure data is accurate and, and secure. And finally, enforcement or redress. This can take the form of either self-regulation by the companies, private remedies for consumers such as filing lawsuits, and government enforcement, including civil and criminal penalties. Here are some common types of privacy notices. One that we've probably all seen a notification about is a privacy policy. This is a document setting out what data is collected about users and how it is used. Then there's the terms of service. These are rules that users must agree to in exchange for using software, websites, or apps. An example is who owns any created content? What are the community guidelines? or what are the rights to arbitration? There's also something called an end user license agreement or a EULA. That's an agreement between the purchaser and the provider of software. And finally, there are mobile app permissions. Those are the types of data or specific system resources that the app is allowed to access and to use. We've noticed that there seems to be a mismatch between what people say they want and what they actually do. Users' observed behaviors and their stated preferences don't always agree. Often, too, users do not understand current technologies related to privacy. Users tend to judge trustworthiness on a variety of factors. And while users do not read privacy policies, and I think there's some good reasons, they do use the presence of these factors to help them judge trustworthiness. And you can see more about this in the linked article here. Now, even if they wanted to, users cannot read all the policies. There's just so many words. In fact, the measured policy length in one paper at the 75 most visited websites in the late 2000s found that the time to read an average policy was 10 minutes. And this meant at that time, if we visit 1,000 unique sites per year, this means about 244 hours per person per year. And the cost of reading all that text was estimated to be about $2,000 to $4,000 per person, or up to $800 billion for the entire US. Now, some people have provided help for users, such as this website, which is called Terms of Service, didn't read. They provide a cheat sheet to various types of policies. It has been a website browser extension, and there's also an API uses a traffic light color palette to quickly communicate ratings of popular websites and apps, 
such as red being invasive and or not transparent, yellow, some tracking, but is not, but is transparent, and green, no tracking, not invasive. Now, keeping track of all these policies, and they have changed quite a bit over time, even since I took the screenshot, is time intensive, and their ratings are open to dispute. A better idea some researchers had was to create a standard for privacy notice interfaces. So one early attempt built on P3P, this was a machine readable privacy policy template in XML format. And so this enabled what was called the Privacy Bird browser add-on to compare your preferences for privacy against a stated P3P policy using that special template and it would alert you to how much the two were in sync via one of four icons. So P3P faced several challenges though to be widely adopted. One was that creating an accurate policy was a complex task. Implementations did not check for errors. Few incentives existed for organizations to adopt it. There was no enforcement mechanism to ensure that policies were accurate or that the policies were followed by the companies. Other projects have now been attempting to use natural language processing and generative AI to automatically parse written policies, which is more challenging. For instance, Carnegie Mellon had a clear terms project and also privacygrade.org, and those were attempts to do this kind of machine-enabled reading. Now, nutrition li labels are designs that facilitate easy comparisons of privacy facts among mobile apps or home IoT devices. They are inspired by the easy to read labels on the sides of cereal boxes and other packaged foods. In a 2013 paper, a study found that users will incorporate their pri this privacy information into their buying and downloading decisions if they have it. And so the matrix design that was on the previous slide was dropped in favor of lists of facts for iOS and Android apps, which fit more easily on a mobile screen. The matrix design now is being adapted in some uses to help guide consumer shopping for secure and private IoT devices. Thank you for listening. I'll see you in class.